Morning, everyone. Hola. Um, it's my pleasure to be here. I'm, my name is Xin Wei Hu. I'm the uh, chair of technical committee of Open Oil Community. It's really nice to be here to see all these old good friends. And for today, I'm going to introduce Open Oil, uh, what we are working on for a future of intelligent and diversified computing. So uh, a lot of things happened in the industry in the past few years. We see a lot of new hardware technologies emerging, especially the rising of domain-specific architecture is quite attractive to all of us. And also, we see a lot of new application demands because AI has made huge success, and that really impacts almost every area, from the internet of everything to the industrial transformation. So uh, we see that the diversified computing AI has arrived. What we need is a platform to support all these versatile scenarios. And also, we need a platform to be able to the innovation engine to support and implement all these new requirements from both hardware and application. And that's the reason that's why we start to build Open Oiler. Open Oiler is an open source operating system to support both versatile application and diversified devices. From the application's point of view, we almost cover all these main, mainstream scenarios we support CRM and ERP application from the information technology point of view. We support OSS and NFE, if you're familiar with that, from the communication technology. And we even support DCS, SCADA, and PLC from the operational technology. That's mostly about industrial manufacturing. And we support all these mainstream applications from AI to cloud native to big data, et cetera. So that's from the application. And for the hardware, we covering all these diversified devices. We support all these mainstream CPU architectures, including x86 and ARM. And also, we support emerging hardware, including RISC-V and Longsum from China as well. And we support quite a lot of uh, types of servers and boards. But what really makes OpenOIL different from other OS, we think, is our goal to make a OS for diversified and intelligent computing in all scenarios. Why does that matter? Well, we'll talk about that a little bit more details. First, why the diversified computing really matters? We think because the world of everything smart needs that. With the very rapid development of AI technology and the internet of everything, we already see the demands of computing power is growing very fastly. People estimated that in 2030, the, the global general computing power will reach 3.3 setaflops. Well, that's about tenfold increase over 2020. And the, the global AI computing power will increase even faster. That's estimated it's about 105 setaflops in 2030, which is a 500 fold increase over 2020. And besides this rapid increase of computing power requirements, we also see the different computing tasks actually requires different computing powers. We use CPU for the general computing, and we usually use NPU or GPU for the AI computing, and sometimes we use DPU for the data processing line. And everything sounds fine, sounds good, but we actually see some shadows casting upon that, because the utilization of computing power in today's data center is already very low. In a typical data center, we see about half of the computing power is actually wasted on CPU already. And the divi uh, diversified computing power will make things even worse because of various reasons. And that creates a dilemma that, for one hand, we want to have much more computing powers to achieve the bright future about the world of everything smart. But on the other hand, because of the low utilization of the computing power, make the sustainable development dim, and it's hard to achieve that bright future. And so we think this is a challenge the industry face. And this is also a challenge for us to reach the carbon peak in 2030 and the carbon neutrality in the future. And we also think operating system can play an important role here to solve this challenge for the future. Why is that? Because we see the challenge and opportunity in both memory, in scheduler, and also in management. Let's take memory, for example. For today's GPU and MPU, if you look into the software stack, you can aware that the device driver 
take the responsibility to manage the memory inside the device, right? And the application developer's responsibility to manage the data movement between the devices. And we actually think they don't doing well. And memory management is actually too important to be managed by these individual developers. So the idea is that we think the operating system should step forward and manage and unifyly manage all these heterogeneous memory of all these heterogeneous devices. So our idea is called GMAM. The proposal is called GMAM, and there will be a separate technical talk later this afternoon. Uh, we see a lot of improvement by leveraging this technology. So the uh, so the device drivers and application developers don't have to reinvent the wheel again and again for the slightly different customized scenarios in the diversified computing. And uh, you're welcome to join us and see if we can improve this proposal altogether. So that's about the memory. And if you look into the scheduler, you can find something very similar. It's not easy to share the diversified computing power across different tasks, especially when the tasks have the different priority. And the idea, so we're still mocking up and we don't have a solid solution, but we think the idea is to, uh, to make a collaborative scheduler between all these diversified schedulers so that you can have a preemptive scheduler across these diversified computing powers. And you can even migrate your tasks among all these computing powers. So that's about scheduler and we want to make it more efficient. And then about management, we see a lot of work in the community already working on that too. And for OpenOILA, we currently have a, a special, interest, special interest group working on DPU already. We want to provide a unified interface for the various small DPU devices in China market. And by doing that, we are able to create pools out of these devices. And by pooling, it's able to uh, achieve a totally higher uh, utilization of all these devices. So to all to all, our idea is saying, we think for the diversified computing in the future, what we really need is a converged OS. So OS will not manage these diversified computing devices as separate devices anymore. Instead, we want to unify them to converge them, converge them all together into one so that operating system can manage, can allocate resources, can schedule across them from the global point of view. And by doing that, we are able to improve the computing power utilization and also reducing the computing power waste and to achieve a better future for us all. So the second, why we really need an OS for all scenarios that have been asked a lot of times when we, when we start to announce that. And we want to make clear that it does not mean that OpenOIL provides a single operating system instance to running everywhere. Instead, we actually as a OS platform to be able to create OS for all these different scenarios from cloud to edge to embedded. And that gets some obvious benefit for us, first of all, by improving the toolbox of OpenOILA. We're able to combine and tailor the software components on demands and be able to combination on demand that we can actually share in technology across cloud, edge, and embedded. That also means if you port a feature to the to cloud, then you can automatically benefit on the edge and even on the embedded as well. So the technology sharing is a good thing for us. And we actually see something even better because the boundary between the cloud and edge is already very blur in today's industry, and that happens as well on the edge and embedded. And when we root all the OS into one single platform that we're able to interwork in the ecosystem of embedded, edge, and cloud, that also means if you develop an application for the OpenOIL embedded version, as the embedded instance said, that application can migrate to run on the edge with no problem and even migrate to the cloud. So that's about ecosystem interworking. And also because we all share the operating system kernel, it's a way to fastly simplify the interconnection between the edge and embedded. And we see a lot of good things happen there too. So our idea is that OS for all scenarios really makes the cross domain innovation easier and that cross domain innovation really helps us for, uh, to, 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 to get to the future for the all things smart. And then last but not least is about what we need uh, OS for the future of intelligence. What we think is operating system for the future of intelligence really need to be with AI, for AI, and by the AI. So what do we mean? So for nowadays, OpenOS us start to support, operate, and manage but with AI. We uh, we just developed a new shell 
called Open Oil Copilot to connect the large language model to your system administrator daily work. So by using Open Oil Copilot, the system admin can just use a chat style language to ask the copilot to uh, uh, to uh, collect information, to, to analyze and fine tune the system, and the copilot itself be able to generate scripts and be able to run the scripts by the permission of system administrator, and then can uh, analyze the system bottleneck and fine tune the kernel setting of system parameters. And after all, we can achieve the system running on OpenOILA have a better throughput, a lower latency, use less hardware resource, and best of all, always stay up to date. So that's about with AI. And OpenOILA is also ready and optimized for AI. We, we, we're going to integrate Llama and ChatGLM, for example, into the release of the community distribution directory. And also, we will try some out of tree features, as mentioned, like, for example, GMAM uh, integrates into the OpenOILA to make AI application running better. And also, uh, OpenOILA assists build and test by AI. For example, on the compiler side, the Vision compiler is an LLVM-based one. It's uh, uh, trying ways to replace the heuristic algorithm with AI model to provide a smaller and faster binaries for OpenOILA. And also, we leverage AI for the fast testing. And we use AI, use large language model to uh, generate testing models, uh, which can help to get a better software quality. And also, these testing results will get feedback to uh, the upstream community to, uh, to benefit a wider community. So, uh, as mentioned, that for OpenOLA, we're working on the diversified intelligence in all scenarios. But back to the foundation, we're still an open source project. OpenOLA is not built from nothing. We actually build based upon the successfulness of a lot of open source projects. And OpenOLA itself is an open project, is a community project. When we started OpenOLA about three years ago, we count the daily active developer is about 311. And nowadays, when we count the daily active developers, it has been increased for about 300 to 4,000, almost 4,000. That's about 10 times in three years, which is an awesome result. And with the contribution of all these developers and also the users, even more users beyond counting that the, our community is able to generate about more than 100 pull requests per day, the packages directly integrated into OpenOILAS increase about 30 every day. And for every month, there are about 10 newly charted projects inside the community and we release more than 80 bug fix updates to the community every month. So we, um, we all understand that community development and innovation is a quite long run process, and all these numbers cannot be achieved without the help, without the continuing hard working of everyone. And because of this contribution, we can see that OpenOILA has already become a dynamic and innovative community. We have a lot of incubated projects inside the community. Uh, well, we don't have time to, to go through all of them, but just name a few. Like, for example, you can see Mika. Mika is our project to co-deploy a real-time OS together with a non-real-time OS on a single multi-core SOC. Well, it's kind of mouthful, but that's the trend of the industry today. And also, you can see the software bus. Software bus is a, a way to auto-discover and communication for the devices on the edge. We learned that idea from today's smartphone and wearable IoT scenarios, but when we implemented it for OpenOILA, we found that's really, really in helpful for the industry. Okay, uh, there are so many other incubated projects. Uh, we, we can't go through all of them, but we consulted a wide paper in English uh, to, to introduce all of them so you can find one paper on our website nowadays. And we also want to emphasize that OpenOILA is not just a technical preview we also very, very focus on landing these technologies in real scenarios. Uh, for the uh, community members, we already have more than 1,100 community members, and all these members, they join the, they join the community, and they use OpenOil as a base OS for their daily work. And the, uh, the installation base for OpenOil already reached more than uh, 4.5 million. Uh, that also means OpenOLA has been evaluated 
and verified in a lot of scenarios, including carrier, finance, public facility, and even powers. Oh, given this widely adoption, we have the confidence that Obamola is gaining momentum, and we also have the confidence that Obamola can be even more widely adopted. So that concludes my talk. Thank you very much, and you're very welcome to join our community to work together on an OS for the future, for the diversified and intelligent computing in all scenarios, and you can learn more about us on Boost D1. Thank you very much.